All right, so I want to look at uh, a better way of doing videos. So I like to do all my videos on the website custom. So I want this to be a giant video section. And I want the URL to determine what video is being played. So I want to have a bunch of movie files on my server. And then I want one flash file that will load in all the videos. And the reason I want to do that is because if I change the flash file, then I want that change to be reflected across the whole board. So the other option of doing this is to create a Swift file for every single video, and that's not what I want to do. So what we need to do is pass data from the URL into Flash to determine what video to play. So to do that, we'll just open Flash, and I'm doing this in CS4, but the way I'm going to do this, it works in CS3 and uh, Flash 8, because I'm going to use Action Strip 2. So what we need to do is just drag in a video, uh, onto the stage and I'm using uh, an MOV file and that's going to ask us to import the video we're going to import it on our computer and load an external playback it might ask you to encode the video in flash but we don't want to do that we want to leave it MOV because I don't feel like converting the video to flash every time the skin the skin is going to be what player controls you have but I want to custom make all my player controls eventually so for now I'm going to do none because it looks cleaner hit continue and then finish so now it's going to load our video onto the stage, and then we need to readjust our stage to match our video dimensions. So the video is 720 by 450, so we'll click the stage and then click Edit in our properties, and that was 720 by 450. So now our stage matches our flash video, and I'm going to leave a little extra room here. I'm going to fix this later, but for now, I'm just going to make a text box that I can get uh, some data back so I know that the right thing's happening. So we want this to be a dynamic text box, which means it's going to load in variables. So select from your drop-down box dynamic text, and then give it an instance name of test dot, uh, underscore txt to signify a text box. And then we want, we want to make sure our video doesn't automatically play. So we'll click our component, and we're going to load our component inspector. And if this is not here, then you need to go to Window and Component Inspector. And that's going to load this up. So we want to uncheck Autoplay. So click this, drop it down, change it to false. All right. And the content path really doesn't matter because we're going to load in content ourselves. So we can leave that alone. So once that's done, uh, we need to create some controls here. So let's go back to our timeline and make two layers. So this bottom layer is going to be our player. This middle layer is going to be our play button. We're going to make it in a second here. And then the top layer is going to be our actions layer. Always put actions on their own layer. So the play button, we're going to make that real quick. It's just going to be a simple triangle. So we'll click our, our, our rectangle tool and go down to polystar. And then go back to properties and options. And make sure this is set to 3. And then we'll just draw a, uh, a triangle on the stage. And just move that around a second here. And then F8 on your keyboard to make it a symbol. And we'll just call this play. Make it a button. And then click OK. Now, once it's a button, we need to give it an instance name so we can refer to it. We're going to call that play underscore btn. And underscore btn for buttons. All right. So now we also want to add actions directly to the button because you're going to be clicking it. So actually, it's probably better off that you don't actually add actions to the button that way. So let's add all the actions to our frame instead. So once you click the frame, you click, uh, you type in Option F9 to open your actions panel. So first thing we need to do is control this button. So underscore root to get the root, and then we want to do dot uh, play underscore btn dot on release equals a function brackets close your brackets, and in there we want to play the component. So underscore root dot comp, which is the instance name we gave our component dot play with parentheses. So that will play our movie. And then we want to have underscore root dot play underscore btn. So this button itself, we want to change the alpha property to zero because after you click the play button, it should go away. So that's going to control our button. The next thing we need to do is control uh, the actual video itself. So to do this, we need to get some external controls. So we're going to import uh, flash dot external if I can spell external dot external interface 
Okay, and you can just copy this straightforward. It's the exact same thing you're going to use. And we're going to store a variable URL because basically we're going to get the URL of the uh, website. And it's going to be external interface dot call. And then this is going to look similar to JavaScript window dot location dot href. So that's the window object and then the location property of the window object and then the href property of the location property of the window object. And then we're going to call a method called toString, which is going to take that data we get and convert it to a string for our use and close that. And then that's going to give us something similar to a URL. So pay, you know, uh, mysite.com slash page dot php question mark video equals you know my vid dot moving okay so this is what we have from this but this is what we want just this ending part so what we need to do is we need to get the URL so we need to cut the URL so we're going to do URL dot substring str and that's going to cut the video up and it's going to take two parameters the start and the length we want it to start from question mark video well we want it to start from this equal sign but we can't just straight use the equal sign because there could be multiple equal signs in the URL. So we need to start from question mark video equals because we're going to make sure that that is how we refer to all videos. So we need to find the index of that string, that partial string, in this giant string. So to do that we'll do uh, url.index of that partial string. And if I can actually type the whole thing, question mark video equals. Okay, so that's going to get the index of that and then we actually need, that's going to start out from the question mark here, but we actually want to start out from after the equal sign, so we're going to do plus 7, because there are 7 characters right here. So now it's going to start after the equal sign, and we want to go to is the length, and the length is going to be the length of the whole string, so we're going to start from the equal sign and continue on, and that's going to be URL.length to get that. And then that should close our parentheses. Now, we want, this is actually not doing anything yet, so we actually need to restore what we get there in our URL variable. So now, once we have our cut up string, we're going to actually set the video. So to do that, we're going to refer to our component, which is underscore root dot comp, and then we're going to set the content path. And you can actually see, if I click here and click the component inspector, content path right here, that's the property we're changing. So we'll go back to our timeline and open up our actions again. So content path equals that URL. And that URL now is just that ending piece. We're also going to get the uh, that text box, which is test underscore txt dot the text property, that's how you write to a dynamic text box, equals the URL as well. So what this is going to do is not only set the video, but it's also going to give us some output so we can actually see the right thing is happening here. All right. So I can't test this in Flash because there's no URL here, but I can test it back on the website. So all we have to do is file, export, movie, and we'll call it test, save it out, and then we're actually going to drag our test Swift over to our help data, and then we'll reload our page. And once we refresh the page, we can see that here's the whole URL. And then here's the flash file and table .mov. So we actually want to have question mark video equals right there. And then once you see, I've loaded this website using this keyword that we chose. And you can see in the text box here, it says table.mov. So that's gotten the right data. And if I hit play, that will actually load the video. So it's actually taking a second here to load it. Okay, so it's not playing, so let's take a look at what actually happened here. We'll go back to Flash. And uh, so troubleshooting usually starts with checking to make sure all your names are correct. So there's our button, uh, play underscore BTN, click that, play underscore BTN, all right. And let's see, oh, let's see. Okay, there's our problem. We didn't actually name our movie, so we'll name that comp. And now we actually can refer to it like we have been. So export movie test and we'll go back and load that back in and refresh this page and there we go. This is the table movie and if I hit play this video actually starts to play. So let me actually so there you go. So now you have a method of 
uh, creating videos and sending data back and forth using the URL to Flash.